Hi, it's Gadget UK here again, um, and my Commodore 64 yet again. Um, you may have seen in previous videos, um, I had a problem with the CIA, um, one of the pull-ups, I think it was on the up direction. Now at that same time, I noticed that Last Ninja was uh, Last Ninja 3 was skipping the intro. Um, now I swapped out the CIA, started working again with the Last Ninja, the... Um, I worked out with the CIA, it was just a failed pull-up, and I'm using that CIA somewhere else, there's nothing wrong with it, it really is just a failed pull-up. Um, with a resistor on there, it's, it's fine. Um, now, I didn't think anything else of it, I thought that that CIA was the cause, but, it, you know, roll on three or four days later, I thought, oh, I'll load Last Ninja again, uh, Last Ninja 3, let's watch the intro, and it's skipping again, skipping every single time, doesn't show any of the intro whatsoever. Um, now, the system is working okay in every other aspect, um, well, I, I say every aspect. I mean, I just tested Rainbow Islands, and actually, it kept crashing just in the same place every single time. So, um, following that, I thought I'm going to look at the schematics because there's something going on with the input. It's definitely input related because on Last Ninja, when it skips the intro, the directions are doing all sorts of weird things, like it's moving on its own. It's bizarre. Um, and the only thing I could see related to the CIA that's handling the input, um, I think it's this one, U1 here because it connects to the keyboard matrix and uh, the joystick ports are sort of in parallel with some of those connections I think is the U, U4 the C28 4066 and I just wondered if something was glitching on here um, so what I've done I mean I, the only test I've measured I've, I've checked what I can I can't see anything wrong with that component but it's still on the board I've not socketed it yet but that's my next port of call but before I did that I thought I'll flash my easy flash car which I've just done put the diagnostics bias on there and I thought I'll just see if it comes up with any failed because I was expecting a ramp failure from completely honest despite just seeing that 4066 and I don't think you can see just down here 4066 U28 uh, bad so there we go, that, 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 I was sort of on the right tracks with it, it wasn't a RAM fault as I was kind of expecting this to come back with, but that, I believe, that's what's causing my last Ninja 3 to skip the intro. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to socket that 4066 and, uh, and just swap it out, I've got a spare board actually on the side here, I can just desolder the chip from there, I've ordered a couple of chips, but we'll swap it out and I'll see, see whether that solves it. So as you can see, I've taken the uh, 4066 off there. This is just sat on some anti-static foam at the moment. Um, and on the other board, um, I've just taken off the donor 4066 here. So I'll clean that up with a bit of flux, get a socket on there, get a socket on here, and uh, get the substitute uh, 4066 um, in there. So, yeah, nice straight pins and stuff on it. That's all right. The other one, the one that was on here, I've cut off. I just cut it off with cutters. Um, because as far as the system's concerned, you know, that DAG is faulty. I've got a load of these spares on the way anyway. Um, <clears throat> and it was really hard to get off. Someone, had, I think the manufacturer on this particular one, the pins had all been bent over. So it was proving very difficult to unblock the holes. Um, whereas on the other board, it just came straight off in about 10 seconds. So anyway, I'll get a socket on there now and we'll give it a try. Well, there we go. It's like second pass now. And uh, yeah, but it's not marked that particular chip is faulty now, whereas before it was consistently. So uh, you can see socketed there. So that's solved the problem. Um, be interested to see if Last Ninja you know, skips. So I'll carefully reassemble this um, and we'll give it a try. Let's see if this skips now. Still skipping the intro, I think. Yeah, this. There's another fault with this uh, 64. This is hard to believe. It seriously is. I mean, firstly, you know, there's a problem there with the 4066, um, but this game still skips the intro. Now, I don't know if it's the PLA revision on the 64. Can you see weird things happen to the character there? It's like his top half split from his bottom half. The system runs fine. Every other game works. Um, it's bizarre, absolutely bizarre. Um, I'm going to put the diag card in again just to give it another test. So this is a quick update uh, the following day. Um, it's reporting that the um, chip is faulty again, but intermittently, very randomly, even though it's been swapped out, there's nothing wrong with it. It's a red herring. Um, but previously it was doing it all the time, so yeah, maybe it was faulty, I don't know, but as you can see it says it's bad. Now if I reset it, I just let that go through again, you'll see that it will report it as being good. Um, 
Now, looking at, I'm, I'm trying to make sense of this. I can't quite understand. You know, I guess that's a clue. Um, I mean, it could be a, um, useless in the sense that it depends why it's actually erroring. If it's uh, if it's erroring legitimately, like there is, it's detecting there is something wrong with the response when it's you know uh, specifically running some code that should, in theory, test that particular you know functionality of that chip. As long as there's not some flawed logic there, then maybe it's a clue. Um, now I'm thinking along the lines of the CIA's, you know, because the whole thing with Last Ninja when it skips, it's almost like it's an input thing, like a key press, is, you know, a button's been held down or something when there isn't. And I guess if the wrong CIA was accessed at the wrong time, maybe it could be detecting something on one of the other I/O lines, like the serial, um, you know, the serial interface or something, rather than actually looking at the keyboard. And, joystick where it should be doing or something along those lines I don't know almost like the, the chip selects wrong now if that was the case there's very limited things I can see look at the schematics that could be relevant um, there are two control signals that go to the uh, CIAs um, from 74 LS139 which is you can I mean you can see like it's not report that chip bad so anyway if you come down here um, yeah the 139 is here so I'm just, you know, I'm just wondering if that's worth swapping that out. I might socket it in any way, just, just to rule it out. I should, I could, perhaps I could get the scope onto it. But the problem is with this, as you can see, it's intermittent. It's extremely intermittent. So it's another one of these. Unless you've got a scope that's got capture um, capability, and you capture it, and you wait for it to fail, and then you look back at your captures, you're not going to get anything. It's, uh, I don't think there's anything... It's, it's very the, the nature of this is very random. Um, sorry, I just muted that. It's annoying. Um, so there's a 139 and that derives the CIA1 and CIA2. You can just see here actually if I just try to show you in the diagram. You've got CIA1 there, goes to the chip select, um, and somewhere down here is CIA2. There you go, it goes to the chip select. Those come straight from the 139. That is used to derive you know the control uh, chip selects for the CIAs. So I'm just wondering if there's a glitch there. Now, if there is, it's one of two things. It's this the 139 or ultimately it's the PLA because the PLA is what drives the 139. Um, there might be other inputs from somewhere else. I don't think there is actually, I think it's just the PLA by the looks of things. Um, now, I've, I've ruled out the SID, uh, or the SIDs. I've removed those, I've ruled out the VIC. Um, it's definitely not the CIA, I've swapped the CIA over. Um, and that's the only CIA that seems to relate to the 4066. So there's very few things linked together in this chain here, other than maybe a RAM fault, CPU problem, um, not out of the realms of possibility, um, but I don't know. Um, I mean, the other problem I discovered yesterday when I was testing this is Rainbow Islands will crash very early on. Um, now, never had that before. That wasn't that wasn't crashing previously, um, but I have had control random control problems with this system since I first got it. Um, now, has the PLA broken down? Is it becoming more and more glitchy as time goes on? Um, I don't know. I'm hoping it's not the PLA because. Uh, yeah, that's two, that'll be two PLAs I need to swap out at the moment, I've not got replacements for. So I think in the first instance here I'm just going to socket up that 139 because I've got some spares for those and just swap it out and try it and just see what happens. Um, but beyond that I think we're looking at the PLA, um, but like I say, I can't, there's nothing tangible, I've got nothing to go on here. I mean, you know, this did crash, I left this test going uh, before and I don't know how long it's been going, about 15 minutes, came back in and it was just a screen full of garbage. Reset it, it was running fine again. So that's what I'm up against here. Um, it's very infrequent in nature, um, but there's something definitely there consistent, a consistent fault that causes Last Ninja to, uh, 3 to skip the intro. Uh, you know, I don't understand why, I mean, it's the diagnostics again, the diagnostics is only as good as, you know, the way it was written. There's clearly something in here, some sort of time glitch. Maybe when you've got, when you're hammering the PLA, maybe that's when it glitches out, you know, it's all very well having a quick PLA test there like we've got in here that lasts all of about half a second. That's not quite the same as I would like. I'd like, I prefer some diagnostic stuff where you can actually test the PLA and have it sort of do all sorts of weird and wonderful things swapping between different um, address modes there. Um, maybe it's something to do with um, CIAs, I don't know. It's so like I say, we'll swap out the 139 I'm not going to gain anything from looking at this anymore, I don't think, with this diagnostics car. Um, but I'll swap at that 139, just see if the behaviour of the system's changed at all, because 
Last Ninja 3 will skip the intro every single time, so that's a good test to do. Um, and it does it from cold, does it from warm, it's just consistent, constantly. Um, so, we'll give that a try. Right, lots of progress um, in unexpected directions here. Um, I measured the VCC, now this is following a comment from Boak. <coughs> it was just a thought I had. It just popped in my mind, I remember his comment about the voltage. When I was measuring the CIA, when I had the problem with the CIA, um, I was measuring the um, I.O. pins here, and it's pin 2, whereas I'm a problem with the up direction. Um, and it was measuring about 4.6 volts. Um, now at the time, I didn't think anything of that. I didn't, you know, it, I should have done in retrospect, because <clears throat> I'd already described that there was a pull up there um, from the 5 volt line. So you would expect to see approximately 5 volts there, not 4.6. Now, but what I mentioned that, and that I sort of, sort of bypassed that, said, oh yeah, it's alright, it's the same in the other board. Now it wasn't the other, same in the other board. But I should have, you know, I should have like sort of honed in on that and thought, hang on a minute, power supply. I'm using the same power supply on the other board. So um, I followed his advice. One of his videos, he took this uh, switch um, to bits uh, and cleaned it all up. Now all I did is spray a bit of WD-40. Um, in fact, I'll, I'll rewind a little bit. And I'll do it in the sequence of events here. I cleaned up the uh, connector there, just cleaned up the pins. Uh, and just bent them slightly because it, you can see it still slots in really easily into there. This socket's a bit, a bit worn. Um, I cleaned out the pins. I just used like a really, really fine um, jeweler's screwdriver, one that's small enough to get into the pins without widening the holes because obviously you don't want to widen them. They need crimping, if anything. I, I wish it could get inside that. Might well be able to, if I took it off there, might be able to take it to bits, but I doubt it. It's like the, they're encapsulated within the plastic. Uh, sorry, just off camera. They're encapsulated within the plastic there. Um, the actual uh, holes, you know, the, the, the female parts of the socket. But I clicked, cleaned up, sprayed a bit of WD-40 in it, measured the voltage, and we jumped up from 4.6 volts on the VCC on any of these chips to about 4.7. So I thought, okay, well, that's made a little bit of difference, not a lot. Um, and then I sprayed some WD-40 into the switch, switched it off and on, off and on, off and on, you know, to like, uh, I'll show you sort of like that numerous times there just to get the WD-40 in there. Switched it on, measured the voltage, five volts spot on so the switch there's lots to be said about the switch actually it's not really the socket in this case it was more the switch and um, i'll put a link down below check out Bwak's video i'm going to do what he's done and he removed this switch disassembled it cleaned it all up got rid of any oxidization you know re-greased it uh, reassembled it fantastic that is a good video to watch and i'll be doing that on this um but just to sidestep a bit again before that um I was having glitches with, I think it was Rainbow Islands, I thought, let's load Rainbow Islands. It's, the first screen came on, you know, scrolled up the screen, got about one screen up, bang, it froze with like a couple of corruptions in the middle of the screen, completely locked. Now I could press the NMI button on the uh, ultrasound and it worked fine, the ultrasound, it was like the game had just crashed. So I load it again, same thing, a similar place, not exactly the same place. Um, I then ran the uh, C64 diode car from Easy Flash, left it going for about 15 minutes, came back in and found it had crashed, it just, the, the diagnostics had crashed. So I thought, oh god, this is weird, this. And this is before I obviously got to the power supply side of things. So I thought, I'm going to recap this, because the symptoms here are that the caps... And I hadn't recapped it, it was still on its original caps there. So you can see there, I swapped out all three of these caps. And the interesting thing with these I'll mention is, you've probably seen that it was the, the, the ones that go this way. I can never remember if it's axle or radial. Um, I think it's... Um, I'm not even going to say, I can never remember, I always get axle and radial mixed up, but they were the types of caps where you've got a connection here, a connection there, you know, the sort of elongated across the board there. Um, well, the, the, the way these boards have been designed, they've got additional pads, they've got three pads for each cap, and you can just use, I think one's marked negative, so you can put this type of cap on there and lay them down that way. I mean, you could stick them upright if you've got small ones, but otherwise they'll interfere with the keyboard. So I recapped it. Um, the voltage level, I measured on the scope actually, no ripple, there was some ripple, and that was one of the reasons I replaced the caps actually. I had about 0.6 volts ripple on there, which is a hell of a lot really. Um, so after that, nice, clean, stable power supply. Rainbow Islands runs forever, I've played it and played it and played it. I got up to about level 4 or something. And then we back to the scenario now where the game still skips, and uh, if I measure, I'll show you the VCC actually, just, just to put your mind at rest. Um, I'll put my mind at rest actually, that it is still still measuring uh, 5 volts. So you can see the meter there and hopefully you can see I'm just measuring the uh, VCC pin uh, get it in the right place, down there 5.07 volts, we've got a really good 5 volt signal now so so that was that um, and we still got the problem so I was like, oh, 
is this a PLA issue? You know, and I, I, I needed to take this PLA off here actually, um, because I've not got a PLA on the other board. I want to do some testing on another board. So I thought, well, sod it. It's always nice to have the PLA socketed. So I will socket the PLA and we'll just rule it out anyway, if anything. So that's what I did. You know, socketed it, swapped it out. It's just the same. So the PLA has got nothing to do with this, which leaves next to nothing in terms of, you know, potential causes for this. Um, because it's definitely input related. Now, coming back to the 4066, the clue that this provides when it, it gives you the error there in the diagnostics cart, um, I was looking at the schematics again, and I'd, I'd, I'd sort of, some, I'd looked at the schematics previously when that 4066 had been swapped out, and that homed in on the pot X and pot Y on the SID. Um, so, I guess at that point, one of the first things I did there is to take the SID out, SID out, let's remove the SID, test it without SID. Same problem, last ninja skips. Uh, messenger 3 skips the intro when there's no SID in there um, so at that point I kind of ruled the SID out um, now the interesting thing is that was a mistake because what the reason that game seems to skip is it's specifically looking at the pot X and pot Y impulse and I think it's because it was designed it's one of those games that was designed to run on the 64 GS you know the game system the console consoleized type version of the C64 um, so that is why that game skips. It's something to do with pot X and pot Y. Now, I've just discovered from a bit of trial and error here that if I remove if I remove my 6581 from here, uh, I'm trying to think about this. Yeah, if I removed this board, I removed my dual SID board, and I used this test SID, suddenly Last Ninja 3 is okay. Now, bearing in mind this is a crusty test SID, you know, it's not great. Um, so then I thought, well, maybe it's my SID. There's something wrong with the pot X and pot Y on my SID. So, what did I do then? I took the my original SID, uh, the heat sink SID, that I originally had on this board, and put that back in. And actually, that doesn't skip um, on Last Ninja 3 either. So what seems to have happened is, previously, I think, when it was skipping, I had a problem with bad connections on the... Um, it could have even been the 4066 down here, actually, that was actually causing that. I don't know. But with my original set, there was no problems with the game skipping the intro. Um, but with this dual SID board, there is. Um, and then I thought, OK, well, maybe there's something to do with pot X and pot Y. Maybe because you've got pot X and pot Y on the second SID, Maybe there's a clash or something going on somewhere. That is exactly what has happened. I've just proven this by removing the 8580, testing with a single SID on here. Um, and in fact, I can do that now. You, you saw it skip a minute ago. There was no intro. If I remove this 8580, I should really be using a, a dip extractor or something for this, but it's not the easiest thing with this type of socket. There we go, that's out now. So I'll stick that on the static pad. Hang on a sec. Um, and if I switch it on again, I'll show you the screen. Bear in mind, the only difference here now is we've removed the second SID. It's only got one SID in there, um, as it should do. And if I press F1, press N, again, no key presses or anything. And if you just watch what happens this time, we get the intro. So, yeah, ignore the crustiness of the sound there. That is a pretty crusty SID. Um, but that's very interesting. So that then supported my thoughts, you know, as soon as I saw that, just let me switch that off, as soon as I saw that behaviour, I thought, yeah, it's de on this instance now, the problem is the second SID. When I had a problem previously with my original SID, when it was a single SID, it was the pins, um, and I, I've cleaned the pins up. The two pins, one of the pins, and it was pot -X, was like really crusty, it was really, really dirty, it was like oxidised. That was the problem, the socket wasn't very good either, so it was no surprise that I was getting that problem, but it's just all coincidence, it's coincidence that I had that particular problem and then roll on a few weeks later after I sorted it, after I swapped out the CIA because I had a problem with the up direction, um, that problem came back at that time, I thought there was, you know, it's like I say, there's just been all sorts of issues with this. Um, the power wouldn't have helped either, you know, because I had like, 0 0.6 volts ripple, um, on the 5 volt line there, it needed desperately recapping, uh, bad connections there, you know, the switch wasn't very clean, the socket was awful, so I mean these are all things I should have checked when I first got it, I just, because I never had any problems from day one, and the voltages were alright when I first measured it, I just assumed there were no issues there. Um, so, but those are all things you should do, you know, par for the course kind of thing, you should just get them out of the way when you get one of these, recap it, you know, switch, you loop, disassemble and re-lubricate your switch, clean it up, clean up your socket and stuff, those are all things you should do. 
Um, the other interesting thing here, and I, I sidestepping myself again, this video is just full of sidesteps of just snips of bits of things that I found as I went along. One of the things I was also totally shocked at, I, I, I kicking myself again, I should have looked at the schematics more thoroughly, but in all the years I worked on these, I always assumed this 5 volts was derived by this 7805 down here for the, the, the CMOS, uh, you know, HMOS, NMOS logic on these. That is completely incorrect. Looking at the diagram, and this is the other thing that got me thinking about the recap. When I was looking at the diagram, the 7805 is marked, the output of it, as 5 volt can. Now, uh, Biwak, I talked to Biwak about this yesterday after I sort of discovered all this stuff and recapped it, etc, etc. And he made the comment, yeah, the 5 volt can, he assumes is the VIC. It's the, you know, it's everything inside this can here. So that's what the, the can references on the schematic. It's providing a 5 volt supply for the VIC, independent of what the 5 volt supply for here. Maybe to do with noise, maybe to do with uh, current. I've got no idea. Probably noise, I would think. Um, so, and th th that's the other interesting thing. Like I say, you measure the voltage there, 5 volts. You measure the voltage there before I recapped and cleaned up the sockets and things. 4.6 volts and th that, that drove me nuts for a while and this is why I started looking at the schematics and when I saw the 5 volt can stuff and then I started doing some probe you know continuity tests on here I realized there wasn't continuity between the 7805 and the 5 volt you know the VCC connections on these chips um, and at that point then came to the conclusion actually I'm missing something here and I, I went back and looked at the schematics a bit again and realized this 5 volt supply comes in from here direct from the power supply which it makes all makes perfect sense and just you know kicking myself a stupidity really and all the years and again I worked with some really top top engineers I really did some really professional electronics guys one of them um, was a guy who's like head of at some point he was the head of the electronics side of Dixon's all of their stuff repairs everything um, I think he was like head of a repair center um, he had like I don't know five thousand or ten thousand engineers underneath him. You know the guy was extremely qualified. He was a really, really, really smart guy, um, and he could fix anything. He could just look at something, with no, take no measurements and just see a symptom. You, you know all sorts of things you just wouldn't believe. You'd just be able to go, oh yeah, I know what that is. And he'd, just, he'd you know take a couple of measurements. Ten seconds later, he'd worked out exactly where the fault is. And some of the that old electronic equipment, especially VCR stuff and TVs and things. Uh, some of the VCRs where you got tens of thousands of bloody components on them, he would know exactly what was wrong with it, even though he'd never seen that particular fault before. He was just a genius, the guy. Anyway, what I'm trying to get at, it, despite the fact that it was some really top guys, um, they had no clue that <laughs> the, the 5 volts for the logic came from the PSU, and I guess that's probably because back then you never really got problems with the power supply. If you if you if it was completely dead, you might you know one of the first things you do is check the fuse on the back of the PSU there. Um, and nine times out, of, well not even nine times, hundred times out of hundred, that would fix it. If you know um, the seven eight so seven eight oh fives never failed. I never I don't think I ever had a C sixty four where a seven eight oh five has failed. Um, so yeah, it'd be easy to just mistake that if you've never if you've not looked at the schematics. And you've not, you're not, uh, you know, uh, you don't fully understand uh, the stuff that's here, you know, in advance. You wouldn't know that. Um, yeah. Anyway, it is blatantly obvious, like sound reflection. Um, the schematics are fantastic. It's really invaluable having those. And um, I have spent quite some time just looking through um, all of it, really, just seeing how it hangs together. I've learned an awful lot about the connectivity of various things here. Um, you know, like even just the chip selects, how the chip selects are driven by this 139 here. Where do we go from here? Well, in terms of fixing my problem, because let's like say that we've honed in on the fact that it's pot X and pot Y, um, I'm just speculating actually. The two, now the two aren't joined up. Pot X and pot Y are not joined up between these chips. But I guess when it's trying to do something, you know, it's writing to, it's using the read-write pen. Uh, maybe it's trying to read something from the SIDs um, based on the pot X and pot Y values and the clashing with each other. Um, so I'm thinking of just grounding. Or either pulling, putting plus five through a pull up into pot X and pot Y of SID two, or grounding it. So I think I'll try grounding it first, and we'll just see if that solves the problem. I'll stick my original SID back in there, and I'll stick the eight uh, five eight zero back in there with those two pins grounded, and we'll just see if that solves it. So a couple of other things just worth pointing out here, um, and obviously I've swapped those chips over, so we've got those now, and I've grounded the pot X pot Y. We'll give that a try in a second. 
Um, other thing worth pointing out, I moved, instead of taking the 12 volt for the fan straight from um, this uh, 780, uh, 7812 here, 12 volt regular, I've taken it to the, from the 12 volt line here that's uh, smoothed by this cap. Again, I think that was a suggestion by Bilwak actually, it was, um, uh, it pointed out, you know, connect it to the, the, the cap actually, um, that's the best way. So I've done that anyway and that's that's just helped helped a little bit but there was only a tiny tiny bit of noise there as it was it was hardly evident you'd have to have the volume pretty much maxed down the TV to be able to hear any interference from that fan but actually now there's none so um, you know and that's great and the, the voltage like I say is all sorted out now I've just checked it after just powering back up 5.07 volts so we've got a really nice clean 5 volt signal so if I just point the TV um, and we'll just quickly test this game again I think that's sorted it. Fantastic. So um, yeah, awful lot of sidestepping and backtracking and jumping all over the place with this particular fault uh, or series of faults. Um, but it's been worthwhile, you know, because like you know, the, 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 right at the start of these problems here, problems with the CIA. Well, actually, the CIA problems uh, are kind of resolved now, actually. Um, I had the problems with that particular, um, you know, the up direction. Um, I learned something from that. You know, I fed five volts into that pin. Suddenly, the um, it was it sprung back to life, and it's been all right ever since. I don't even need the pull up on it. I think the pull up was required when the voltage is a bit too low on here. When I was at 4.6 volts, wasn't quite enough. Now it's back up to five. That CIA is fine, despite the fact that I've shown you. If you measure the resistance on, on that uh, particular pin, it's different to the other two. So there is a, a, a minor issue there. At some point, that will probably die. But now that's working again as well um, with the 5 volt supply, which is really nice. Um, the 4066 probably didn't need swapping out. Um, I've socketed one or two things here for moving forward, which will be useful, like the PLA, for example. Um, yeah, it's been recapped, switches cleaned up, socket cleaned up. But more importantly, I've worked out the this issue with the dual SID. So if you do. Um, this dual SID mod. Um, I'll put, perhaps put a comment at the bottom of the dual SID video as well, the physical dual SID video. It's worth uh, grounding pot X and pot Y, or you're just going to set yourself up for problems with your mouse input, or you know this game, or any other game that makes um, does any tries to be readings in the pot X and pot Y values. So just closing up here now. Final things I need to do to this. I've ordered some more heat sinks so I can stick some heat sinks on the uh, 858 over there. I'm, I'll probably heat sink these three ROMs because they get ridiculously hot. They get hotter than probably any of the other components aside from maybe the PLA. In this particular one, the PLA doesn't get too hot actually. Since I put heat sink on there, it barely gets lukewarm. Um, so there's a lot to be said for these heat sinks. They do make a big difference. You can see what I've decided to do here. There's many different ways you can do this. I've just I don't want to interfere with the case and cut holes and all that sort of stuff. So what I've done is um, I've just you know just squeezed it there. You know it just it, it's held by the, the torque of the you know the cables just been um, fitting just nicely into that gap there. And by the time I stick the lid back on, that'll just fit nicely without you know and just have this fly lead coming off the back here for the stereo audio out. So it doesn't need a grommet or anything because it's held quite tight here there's probably a more elegant ways of doing that you know you could put some comments down below if you can think of a nice way to do it you could feed it out of here I did think about having a longer wire it's trailing out of here but then you might get an issue because some of these connectors if you look at this one here they're quite wide if I plug that in uh, you can see there's very little clearance there it probably would just fit out the side there but then you need some way of securing it now you could get one of those little uh, it's like a little uh, metal clamp with a screw hole on it which will clamp the wire and just screw it you know flat into there you know so you could lead it out one of those there or something um, let's say you could just cut a hole somewhere and have a socket mounted but I'd rather not do that I'd rather just you know try and um, leave it so you can just easily revert it so that that'll be fine the lid will just fit over there as long as that's pressed into that little recess, recess there it'll fit fine um, but beyond that yeah I think we're all done on the C64 so I can start using it again so just quickly here the other thing I've done is added a cap there to the 9 volt supply for SID2 so one final thing I've done here, and this is sort of temporary for the moment, I've just uh, mounted one of these little voltage uh, monitor displays, you know, but it's, I've just taped it on the back there just to isolate the pins, but the self-contained, you know, other than the, the plus five and the ground wire coming off, you know, your voltage sheet, because they will measure other voltages as well, um, go into my little tape adapter uh, here, so I could just plug that into an MSC64s and just quickly check the voltage of the 5 volt line, which is quite useful, I guess. 
um, and it's useful to see, you know, to, to watch it as I guess as you use, utilizing the system. Just make sure it doesn't creep up. Um, but I did think about getting another one and fitting one permanently inside here. You could actually use a Dremel to cut um, a square hole out. These come with little flaps. Actually, I've cut the flaps off the PCB. The, the two tiny little flaps that protrude by about three or four millimeters. So. If you imagine, say, cutting, um, you know, dremeling out a little hole big enough for the little display there, there's enough space, there's enough clearance inside just for the, you know, for it to protrude and stick out of the top there. But that might be a more elegant position to mount that, and ultimately, I might do that later um, and just have it permanently as part of this cart. So you need to make sure it's not too low down, otherwise, you're not going to be able to get the cart into your C64. But certainly, sort of up in that position there, I think that would fit quite well. Um, and it's just like a permanent, you know, quick, easy way to be able to check your voltage um, whilst the thing's on, I guess. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.